Yeah, hello friends. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today, uh, in this video, I will be continuing my discussion on high pressure vessels. And for today, I will be talking about uh, theories of elastic failure. And out of the many theories, today I will be discussing maximum principle stress theory of elastic failure. So, in coming few videos, I will be discussing important theories of elastic failure. First in the list is maximum principle stress, stress theory. So, let us the discussion. Uh, the design of high pressure vessels, as far as high pressure vessels are concerned, their design is based on the theories of elastic failure their design, design of high pressure vessels, it is based on theories of elastic failure. Now, what is elastic failure in any material? Elastic failure in any material, it occurs when it is subjected to load uh, that exceeds its elastic limit. So, whenever you have a material and it is subjected to a load uh, that is in excess of its elastic limit then elastic failure of that material will occur so that's why i am saying elastic failure in a material occurs when it is when it is subjected to a load that exceeds its elastic limit now beyond its elastic limit beyond the, the elastic limit of any material the material gets permanently deformed or ruptured that means once the elastic limit of any material is crossed you, uh, if you just have uh, an experiment where you are applying load uh, or uh, you are subjecting a material to increasing loads and as soon as the elastic limit of that material is crossed the material is going to get permanently deformed or permanently ruptured uh, many theories have been proposed for this elastic failure many theories are available in literature to account for elastic failure in materials these theories they are called the theories of elastic failure and I'm going to list some important theories which are this, you have maximum principle stress theory, then you have maximum shear stress theory, you have maximum strain theory, and finally, uh, I'll be talking about maximum strain energy theory. So my aim is to discuss this four important theories of elastic failure. And in this video, I'll be talking about maximum principle stress theory. Again. So, uh, what uh, we have noted or what uh, you can note at the end of this particular discussion, high pressure vessels, they are designed based on theories of elastic failure. Elastic failure of a material occurs if it is subjected to a load that exceeds its elastic limit. Beyond the elastic limit, the material is going to get permanently damaged, permanently deformed or permanently ruptured. Many theories have been proposed in uh, the literature to account for elastic failure in material. These theories, they are called the theories of elastic failure. I have listed four of the important theories. Maximal principle stress theory, maximal shear stress theory, maximum strain theory, and then maximum strain energy theory. And in this video, I will be talking about maximum principle stress theory. So let us know why. Now first, uh, let us know uh, what is the theory. Let us let us understand the theory. So according to maximum principle stress theory, failure in a material will occur if any of the three principle stresses become equal, becomes equal to the elastic limit, and this elastic limit is taken as the yield point of the material. So, according to the maximum principle stress theory, 
failure in a material will occur if any of the three principal stresses i i i i'm going to talk about this three principal stresses but for time being you just uh, understand if any one of the three principal stresses becomes equal to the elastic limit and when this happens the material failure is going to occur in the material in this case the elastic limit is taken as the yield point of the material i'll shortly tell you what is uh, the yield point now the three principal stresses that we are talking about are the axial or longitudinal stress that is sigma a the radial stress sigma r and the circumferential or tangential stress that is sigma c i have discussed about this three stresses in my previous videos i am giving link to those videos you please watch those videos the yield point in this case is the point on the stress strain diagram where the elastic behavior ends and plastic behavior starts so you must be knowing uh, when you have stress strain diagram where stress is plotted against strain then up to the elastic limit the graph is going to be a straight line and once the elastic limit is cross the graph will no longer be straight stress so there is a point on this diagram where the elastic limit elastic behavior ends that is what is elastic behavior stress will be directly proportional to strain and that is why uh, up to this up to the elastic limit the graph is a straight line but beyond the elastic limit they will not be directly proportional that is stress will not be directly proportional to the strain and we say that the plastic behavior has started okay so we are talking about the point at which elastic behavior ends and plastic behavior starts and that point is nothing but the yield point so in this case elastic limit is taken as the yield point and yield point is the point on the stress strain diagram where elastic behavior of the material ends and the plastic behavior starts okay now let us move ahead now the three principal stresses as i said you have the axial or the longitudinal stress that is sigma e which is given by this equation in my previous video i have um, on this particular topic i have derived this equation now i'm directly taking that equation in my discussion so sigma e is pi di square minus po do square divided by do square minus di square where pi is the internal pressure di is the internal diameter po is the external pressure and do is the external diameter similarly the radial stress it is given by this equation again i have derived it uh, in my uh, previous video so sigma r is given as do square di square upon d square into pi minus p not upon do square minus di square minus pi di square minus po do square divided by do square minus di square says so uh, the radial stress is compressive and if you use the sign convention uh, the positions of the two terms will change so it will be pi di square minus po do square upon do square minus di square minus this term if you consider the sign convention so as sigma r is compressive considering sign convention now you can write the equation in a different way so sigma r is equal to pi di square minus po do square divided by do square minus di square minus do square di square by d square that into pi minus p not divided by do square minus di square okay and then you have the circumferential stress which again i had derived the equation for this in my previous video uh, one of my previous videos so uh, i am directly taking the equation the circumferential stress that is sigma c in this case is given as sigma c is equal to pi di square minus po do square divided by do square minus di square 
plus d o square into d i square divided by d square into p i minus p naught divided by d o square minus d i square. Okay, now if you look at uh, the three equations, so you have this equation and sigma r in this case, uh, if you look at the equation for sigma r, you are subtracting one term from this term. Whereas, if you look at the equation for circumferential stress, you are adding one down to this term. So, if you look at the equation for sigma a and then sigma r and sigma c, you will come to know that the maximum out of this three, the maximum principal stress out of, sig out of this three, sigma a, sigma r and sigma c, the maximum principal stress is sigma c. And it is clear from the equation. There is addition of two terms in the equation for sigma c. Whereas in the equation for sigma r, one term is subtracted from the other. And in case of sigma a, there is only one term. So you can easily tell that sigma c is the maximum. So the maximum principal stress is the circumferential stress. Now, if we are saying that maximum principal stress is sigma c, again, we need to check sigma c at the inner surface and then sigma c at the outer surface. So out of this two, again, we have to choose the maximum one. Okay, so let us do that. Uh, okay, since sigma c is maximum, the maximum principal stress, it is the limiting factor to be considered in the design. So design according to this theory will be based on sigma c. Take care. So let us move ahead. Uh, the maximum principal stress is sigma c. Sigma c is the maximum principal stress. And uh, you know the equation for sigma c is p i d i square minus p o d o square divided by p d o square minus d i square plus d o square into d i square by d square into p i minus p naught divided by d o square minus d i square. Now at the inner surface, that means we are going to replace d with d i and high pressure vessels are mostly subjected to internal pressure. So for that case, external pressure is zero. So for these two conditions, that is at d is equal to d i and p o e zero, p o is equal to zero the equation will then be sigma ci at the inner surface. Sigma ci at the inner surface, that is equal to pi di square minus 0, p0 is 0, into do square, divided by do square minus di square, plus do square into di square, divided by di square, we are, we are replacing d with di, into pi minus po is 0, divided by do square minus di square. That is sigma ci is equal to pi di square upon do square minus di square plus do square into pi upon do square minus di square. Now in the next step what we can do, we can take pi common. So you have pi in the first term and you also have pi in the second term. So you can take pi common out of the two. So sigma ci will be equal to pi into do square plus di square divided by do square minus di square. So there is addition of the two terms in the numerator, whereas there is subtraction, subtraction in the denominator. So at the outer surface, d is equal to d0, uh, do, and uh, external pressure is 0. So if you use that information in this equation, you get sigma c0 is equal to pi di square minus p0, po is 0, so minus 0 into do square divided by do square minus di square plus do square into di square upon do square and do square where d is replaced with do into pi minus p0 is 0 so pi minus 0 upon do square minus di square that gives us sigma c0 as pi di square divided by do square minus di square plus di square into pi upon do square minus di square that is uh, there is addition of the same term so one term plus another same term will be two such terms. Therefore, sigma c0 will be equal to 2 pi di square 
divided by d o square minus d i square. Again, if you compare sigma c o with sigma c i, you can easily conclude that out of sigma c i and sigma c o, sigma c i is the maximum. Sigma c i is the maximum stress. So, this will be used for the design. Now, this sigma c i is our maximum principal stress. That is the case. And as per this theory, if this becomes equal to the elastic limit, that is yield point, then the material is going to fail. So let us go ahead. So sigma ci is the maximum principal stress theory. Now that is our conclusion. And we have uh, come to this conclusion based on the analysis. I hope you agree with me. So therefore, sigma ci is equal to, uh, we have the equation for sigma ci. Sigma ci is equal to pi into do square plus di square divided by do square minus di square. Therefore, as I said, according to this theory, failure will occur if sigma ci is equal to the yield stress of the material. And let us denote the yield stress by sigma y. That is, according to this theory, sigma ci, if sigma ci becomes equal to sigma y, material is going to fail. That is, maximum, stress, maximum principal stress is becoming equal to the yield stress. So, if you use equation for sigma i, sigma ci, this will be pi into do square plus di square divided by do square minus di square. That is equal to sigma y. Okay? And this equation is called, this particular equation, it is called maximum principal stress equation and it is also called Lame equation. Okay, now le let us just list some drawbacks uh, for this equation. So, Poisson's ratio, that is mu is not present in the equation. You can clearly see over here. There is no mu in the equation. So, Poisson's ratio is not present in the equation and due to this, there is a poor agreement with experimental results. So, uh, the the results according to this equation, they are in poor agreement with the actual experimental results. And what is the reason for this? The reason is there is no inclusion of Poisson's ratio. What is Poisson's ratio? Mu. There is no inclusion of mu in this equation. This is the drawback of uh, the, this, th this particular theory. Now, let us get the design equation according to this maximum principal stress theory. So for that, for design purpose, a factor of safety will be used. For design purpose, a factor of safety, I'm going to denote that by Fs. So a factor of safety, that is Fs is used so that the induced stress will be less than sigma y. For, uh, and for the design purpose, we are taking safety into consideration and for that a factor is used. We call that as a factor of safety. What is the purpose of using it? So that the induced stress, stress induced in the material will be less than the yield stress. Okay, so you are designing the material or you are designing the vessel so that the induced stress will never be going to uh, or uh, it will never be equal to the yield stress. Take him. So how the factor of safety is used? It is used in this way. Sigma ci is equal to sigma y upon fs. That is we are using a lower value of sigma y. So sigma ci is pi into do square plus di square upon do square minus di square. That is equal to sigma y upon fs. In the next step, I will take di square common from the denominator and the denominator, as from, from the numerator and the denominator. So you have pi into do square upon di square plus di square upon di square divided by do square upon di square minus di square upon di square. That is equal to sigma y upon fs. So di square and di square, di square upon di square is 1, di square upon di square is 1. And now, for du upon di, I am going to use k. 
So if I do that, I get this equation. Pi is equal to k square plus 1. Uh, sorry, Pi into k square plus 1 in, divided by k square minus 1. That is equal to sigma y upon Fs. In this case, k is the ratio of outer diameter to inner diameter. So that is k square plus 1 upon k square minus 1 is sigma y upon Pi into Fs. So I have brought Pi on this side. So that is k square plus 1 is equal to sigma y upon pi into fs into k square minus 1. So I have taken k square minus 1 on this side. So that gives me k square plus 1 is equal to sigma y k square divided by pi into fs. So I am multiplying uh, with this term. Uh, multiplying the bracket with this term. So sigma y k square upon pi into fs minus sigma y upon pi into fs. Okay. So further, uh, if you go on uh, simplifying the equation, it will be k square plus 1 is equal to sigma y k square divided by pi into fs minus sigma y upon pi into fs. That is that is k square minus sigma y k square upon pi into fs. So I, I, I have brought this term on this side and taken this one on the other side. So it will be k square minus sigma y k square divided by pi into fs that is equal to minus sigma y upon pi into fs minus 1. Then I will multiply with minus 1 throughout this equation. So that will give me minus k square plus sigma y k square upon pi into fs that is equal to sigma y upon pi into fs plus 1. Now I can take k square common so it will be k square into sigma y upon pi into fs minus 1 that is equal to sigma y upon pi into fs plus 1. That is k square is equal to sigma y upon pi into fs plus 1 divided by this term. Sigma y upon pi into fs minus 1. That is k square is equal to sigma y plus pi into fs divided by pi into fs divided by this whole divided by sigma y minus pi into fs divided by pi into fs. So pi into fs and pi into fs uh, that will get cancelled out and you are left with k square is equal to sigma y plus pi into fs divided by sigma y into pi into fs. That is k is equal to sigma y plus pi into fs divided by sigma y minus pi into fs raised to 1 by 2. And this is this will be the design equation as per the maximum principle stress theory. So sigma y will be known to us, pi will be known to us and fs will be known to us. You just have to get k and once you have you are getting k that means you are getting and the value of this ratio du upon dr so knowing the thickness you can get the two diameters okay so in this way the maximum principle stress theory can be used to design uh, high pressure vessels to find the diameters of high inner and outer diameters of high pressure vessels so with this I end my discussion for this particular video. In this, I have discussed maximum principle stress theory. Out of the four important theories, the first one was maximum principle stress theory, and I have discussed that in this video. In my next we'll video, discussing the second uh, theory of elastic failure, that is maximum shear stress theory. For now, thanks for watching my video. Do subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends to subscribe to it and have a nice day.